The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, You fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be in put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there's a famous story told about St. Anthony about how he helped two brothers who were, before they entered into a property dispute, very close to one another. But once there was a, a great divide between the two of them over the inheritance that was due to them, it had become so violent and so filled with bitterness and anger that St. Anthony went particularly to each one of these two brothers, listened to both their stories, and reminded them of how much they had been close to one another before this property dispute had come into the picture. The righteousness that Jesus talks to us about in today's Gospel passage is a righteousness that is much deeper, much stronger, and on more solid foundations than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And what does this mean? The Pharisees and scribes, as they are described to us by the Gospels, particularly those who lived in Jesus' time, they were the kind of people who had a social morality. It was based on how people will look at me. How will they judge us? What is their perception of us? And they curated their behavior in public in such a way that they would be considered as holy and pious Jews. But all the while, they harbored hatred, pride, greed, lust, and all other kinds of evil desires. And that's why they were not open to Jesus. That's why they were not open to his newness and the gospel of love. And it is this gospel of love that he holds out to all of us as his teaching, his ideal for us. Love is the basis of all our Christian morality. And it is in such a way that, imagine you and I have CCTV cameras following us wherever we go. We have Google Assistant listening to every conversation that we speak, whether in private or in public. That Google Assistant, that CCTV camera, is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is grieved whenever we do something that is contrary to love. When we come to pray to God, have we ended up hurting someone or being hurt by someone? The Holy Spirit reminds us that we need reconciliation and healing. And it is, He will not allow us to pray peacefully until we attend to that relationship that needs healing. The righteousness that Jesus 
teaches us in the gospel is a righteousness of love and the love of the Holy Spirit as the eternal witness of all our actions, thoughts, words, imaginations. Let us pray that we may not live compartmentalized lives, one face for church, one face for work, one face for the family, one face for friends. But more and more as we grow in our discipleship of Christ, may we become one person, virtuous, not just for appearances, but in spirit and in truth. This is the true worship of the Father that Jesus came to bring into this world. And it is the only kind of righteousness that helps us to live in perpetual peace. The moment we live a double life, what is lost is the inner peace that comes from the Holy Spirit. May we always live in that peace and that joy that comes from knowing that we live by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And as the Gospel says, if we know that we are not at peace with someone who needs our forgiveness, let us make it our resolve to establish peace as soon as possible. Amen.